Bend It Like Beckham is a straightforward and entertaining film about determination mixed with comedy and romance. It's not focused on football intricacies, but on breaking norms. Here's what you need to know. It came out in 2002. It stars Parminder Nagra and Kieran Knightley. This was just one year before her major role in Pirates of the Caribbean. And she was actually cast on the back of this when Jerry Bruckheimer's uh, children watched Bend It Like Beckham. They showed him it. And a year later, she was cast in. And both Parminder Nagri and Kira Knightley really had a kick on from Bend It Like Beckham. So, as Jamie said, Pirates of the Caribbean came a year after. The producer of Pirates of the Caribbean, Jerry Bruckheimer, watched Kira Knightley in Bend It Like Beckham on his daughter's recommendation and cast her based on that. And also for Parminder Nagri, she was cast in the long running um, American series ER based on them wanting to get Indian representation in. And I think that one of the things that we should be aware of is this grossed over 75 million from just a 5 million budget. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very successful film, Mm -hmm, an important film. It was directed by Gurinder Chadha, and uh, the duration is about one hour and 50 minutes long. The film centers on Jess, a British Asian girl whose dreams of playing football conflict with her family's expectations. Alongside her is Jules, played by Kira Knightley, who faces similar challenges. Now, the plot is not complex, but more of a feel-good and entertaining thing. If simple and uplifting stories appeal to you, this film delivers well. Yeah, uh, on the plot, I mean, obviously we're talking about very important themes. So they broach um, gender and the role of gender in sport, as well as race and sexuality and cultural expectations, particularly in the British Asian community. But from a plot perspective... There are kind of key story beats and conflicts which seem to resolve a bit too easily for for my liking, certainly. Um, We mentioned a few in our longer form review, but whenever there is a bit of a conflict, it does seem to be next scene. It it doesn't really matter that much. And and that's a continuation that happens in several different um, parts of the film. Really, you're here for a light-hearted fun time with a few jokes in it. Don't be expecting some sort of narrative tapestry. In terms of cast and performances, performances across the board are fine. Parminda Nagra, who plays Jess, the main character, is easily the standout performance. She mm-hmm. was incredible. Kira Knightley and Jonathan Rhys Myers were less strong in our opinion. And then every single other performance was fine. It was good. Um, however, if strong performances really are crucial for you to enjoy a film, some of the elements of the acting in this film might end up becoming a bit distracting. Yep. And and from a casting perspective, they picked Paminda based on some plays and, and uh, TV shows she's done in the past where she, she comes across as very understated, really sells a role, role well for a sort of everyman figure. She does a really good job at not being too basic and boring, but also um, delivering poignantly on on bits of the story that she needs to execute well yes Kira Knightley um maybe is a bit a, a bit jarring at times but she she holds up an end and, and similarly with Jonathan Rhys Myers's character he's not the most interesting character he's a bit bit bland and doesn't do the best job but you do have other people really coming to the fore so Paminda's great and um, you do have performances from Juliet Stevenson uh not really known for a comic character but she did puts in a really good job as Jules's mum and also Anupam Kev who is a famous Bollywood actor he had been in about 200 Bollywood films at this point he comes in one of his first and only western films uh, and also does a really great job as um, uh, Pabinda's dad in the film. One of the things that's quite important about this film to understand is it has an element of relatability that will really change your experience so if you have experienced UK life in the early 2000s If you were a girl interested in non-traditional pursuits, or if you're familiar with British or British Indian cultural contexts, then this film will have a lot of humor and a lot of moments that will relate to you more and create a more in-depth experience. It was very globally popular, this, as as we've mentioned. Um, Particularly, it got really rave reviews in India, um, where unsurprisingly it found uh, a lot of favor amongst both reviewers but amongst uh, the general public as well um i think it was something like one of the most popular western films of all time at that point when it came out in theaters um, and similarly you know globally it's done a lot it's had a lot of impact in uh, america and with female athletes across the globe in north korea for some reason it's, it's been shown and 
potentially the first film that was televised in North Korea um, from the Western made. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's had a big legacy as well. One of the really important things to understand about this film is that it focuses very heavily on addressing societal expectations of young women. It focuses on themes of empowerment and cultural challenges. So if you value a film that tackles societal norms and you like the films that champion empowerment, this film will resonate with you. Yeah, I mean, there were loads of areas that, that it touched on. I mean, it wasn't just gender, the role of gender in sport and, and how much that it really went on to kick into gear things like grassroots football in the UK. Uh, also, I watched an interview with Gorinda where she mentioned how one of the US team, the US women's team, um, that won the World Cup a few years back, reference Bend It Like Beckham as, as a great influence for all of them. Uh, also, it's, it's done quite a lot in kind of LGBTQ communities. Uh, there are elements of the plot that gear around the sexuality of certain characters, and, and they do it very tastefully. We, we both commented on this. Um, and, of course, then you've got kind of the British Asian experience and and what the traditional upbringing can do and the legacy it can have on young people growing up in Britain. So those are a lot of the things that it does offer. One of the things that it very much doesn't offer is the representation of actual football details within yeah. the story. It's not a particularly central element, and it's much more about character development, breaking stereotypes, and addressing societal issues. So if you're seeking an in-depth sports film, this probably won't meet your expectations. Yeah, as is often the case in you know particular... Uh, productions of, of films or, or theatre the the sport was just a vehicle through which to express some societal messages that the um creators were trying to to get out and really the sport is is quite a, a small element and yeah don't go into it thinking that you're going to really understand or be explained anything to do with football Pacing. Whilst nearly two hours long, the film definitely could have benefited from tighter editing in the earlier stages. It felt like the first half an hour maybe could have been cut in half. It really took a while to get mm. going. And so if pacing is a critical thing for you. Be prepared for that slower start. A lot happens in the first half an hour whilst moving quite slowly. So I remember there was a point where I paused the film um, to do something. I checked back and it said I'd only watched 25 minutes and I was a bit shocked because I was like oh my god we've got quite a lot left I'm not I don't think I'm going to enjoy this particularly but as Jamie said it does pick up after that um but yeah it, it does feel like at the start they're really rushing through a lot of things happening without too much substance music and cultural references it features a soundtrack that blends Bangra and British pop capturing the film's cultural fusion if you appreciate a soundtrack that complements thematic elements, the music here enhances the cultural experience. Yeah, some great, great tracks on here. We both uh, commented, particularly as kids who grew up in the early 2000s, you've had kind of Spice Girls uh, songs. Yeah, so Texas in a Smile. Um, Ness and Dorma made an appearance and was actually fairly relevant given the, the football theme and uh, worked quite well in the story. Um Although we also commented the music didn't necessarily feel like it it had an identity. It was more a selection of, of quite good pop tracks. It was still a welcome um, musical experience. So who will enjoy it? Bend It Like Beckham combines humour, cultural commentary and a story of personal triumph. It's ideal for viewers who appreciate narratives about overcoming barriers and a dose of early 2000s British culture without the need for high budget production. If you enjoy a feel good, culturally rich stories, this film is a great choice for you. Look, there is definitely a big audience for it as shown by how many people ended up watching it and the lasting impact that it has had. Uh, and we both said that there were some really important uh, messages that it managed to articulate in a clear and also well executed way it's not going to be for everyone but it does have a, a big audience 